couple of things that uh, SVG travelers uh, look at before they choose the destination. One is whether this country is safe. Uh, Nepal now a handful of countries which which constitution guarantees equality, non-discrimination, and inclusion. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Nepal Travel Trade Talk on nepaltraveler.com. Today we are joined by a very special guest who can possibly take Nepal's tourism in a new direction with new thinking, something that the world perhaps is in great need of. He is the cultural ambassador of rainbow tourism for Nepal. He has been a member of parliament. He has been the founder of the Blue Diamond Society that started advocacy and fighting for the rights of LGBTQs. We are joined today by Mr. Sunil Bhagwant. Welcome to our show, Sunil. Thank you very much. Thank you. So to start with, for our audience, maybe we can start with Rainbow Tourism and Nepal. Uh, would you like to tell us how this is coming about now? Uh, you know, uh, back in 2009-10, I was member of parliament and I was already uh, promoting uh, rainbow tourism back then, talking about it at least. Uh, one thing is I saw the potential and how other countries have uh, benefited from uh, promoting their countries as a uh, LGBT welcoming destination like uh, Bali in Indonesia, Thailand, uh, Spain, Greece, Italy. Um, and also some extent, uh, you know, uh, even country like Morocco, for example, uh, a lot of these countries did not have a full, uh, you know, pledge uh, equality for LGBTI, but they understood the market and uh, the police closed their eyes. Uh, so the businesses, private sector took over, uh, you know, classic example is Bali, for example, Indonesia is criminalized Muslim. homosexuality, but Bali is taking advantage of it. So I thought, why not we also take example? And back in 2007, uh, the Supreme Court already said LGBTI people are natural. Uh, Nepal become first country to uh, recognize three genders Please. and also said, um, you know, uh, suggested government to uh, pass the same-sex marriage law to do a study first and like that. So it was opening up Nepal. And then there's a lot of unemployment, uh, you know, within the LGBT community. So I thought tourism could be a starting point. Um, but back then, um, you know, we couldn't uh, succeed much. Uh, the country was going through a lot of political instability. And then after 2013, I have to move to UK. But we did manage to organize some, uh, you know, the first, I think, uh, international lesbian couple came to Kathmandu and we organized their same-sex yeah, wedding in Dachin Kali temple. Uh, it was widely reported. Uh, so I have a lot of friends also working as expats here, some travelers contacting back then. They felt very safe. Nepal is a hospitable country. There is no social hostility against uh, LGBTI sure. in, in this country. So it's a, uh, you know, very good uh, kind of uh, environment uh, but the the government and also other private sector uh, the tourism sector did not perhaps uh, understood this potential so that's why we are now, now promoting in a big way uh, it's a huge potential uh, Nepal can benefit big big way and looking at the the history of Nepal what, what makes Nepal an ideal destination, which is, you know, welcoming, open, safe for LBGTQs? Uh, you were mentioning something earlier yeah. about our history and stuff. Yeah. A couple of things that uh, the uh, LGBT travelers uh, look at before they choose where, uh, okay. choose the destination. One is whether this country is safe. Uh, and Nepal now, you know, it's a handful of countries which which constitution guarantees equality, non-discrimination, and inclusion. So Nepal is one of them. 
uh, same sex marriage is uh, registered Reg- in Nepal. Um, you know, I have been elected as the first uh, openly gay member of parliament in Asia mm-hmm. from Nepal back in 2008, too long ago. Uh, the society, the LGBT communities are well organized across Nepal. There are more than 40 organizations. We celebrate by a Pride Festival, other festivals here. That's one part they look at. Second is historically, um, all these festivals in Nepal celebrates from ancient time, whether it's Gai Jatra or Rupai Jatra uh, or, uh, you know, Maruni dance, for example, from Gurum communities. Uh, so many other occasions uh, where traditionally, uh, you know, either male born person express themselves into a feminine attire or vice versa. So a lot of festivals are already ready made, you know, back uh, from, from historic market. time. Uh, that that is uh, uh, interest for that would be interest for LGBT travelers. A uh, second thing is, you know, before Lichibi actually came and settled themselves here, uh, we had this matriarchal, uh, spiritual, social, uh, you know, cult- cultural, economic system, governance system back then, and. Uh, the Kathmandu people know very well about their Ajimas, the grandmother goddesses. And if you look at Kathmandu, um, we have um, more number of temples dedicated to goddesses than gods. So it's a very, uh, you know, matriarchal. Uh, matriarchal society. And in matriarchal system, uh, there are more than six genders accepted. Um, so the sexual expression is not frowned upon. It was not uh, not something to be ashamed of. Uh, people are allowed to freely express um, during those time. And if you look at all these carvings uh, into the temples, you will see a lot of diverse sexual uh, you know expressions, uh, sexual uh, encounters uh, between men and women, but also uh, women, women, men, men, mm-hmm. transgender, third genders, all kinds of you know uh, sexual activities you uh, you would see. And when you see these are the goddesses, gods and other demigods, semigods playing into this form, it was highly accepted. You know, the, the expression was allowed. Uh, that's another part. And looking at the empowered goddesses roaming around, their stories, etc. So it's also not just for LGBT travelers, but also solo women travelers. And if you look at our neighboring countries, how difficult it is it's for true. women. Um, even the women from their own local areas, uh, you know, uh, find it very unsafe. unsafe. But Nepal uh, is very safe for, for women travelers. So another big, uh, you know, emerging market in the world is LGBTA, but also solo women travelers. And Nepal is fit for both. You know, uh, we have great mountains, uh, we have uh, great hiking areas, but also this matriarchal cultural parts that uh, Nepal never strength. promoted. It's time that we uh, bring out uh, from our uh, you know cultural closet and offer it to the uh, world travelers. Uh, so that's what uh, uh, my role now as a cultural ambassador for the pink tourism or the rainbow tourism. Also, you have a calendar of events which was recently you uh, formulated and. Uh, how are you promoting that and how is it being accepted, let's say, by the travel companies, the tours who actually sell that? Yeah, we had, uh, you know, uh, we decided with this recent, uh, very successful uh, Rainbow Tourism International Conference, which happened last month only. So first time bringing out a yearly calendar uh, with the events, festivals and uh, so many other, uh, other things like sports. Um, uh, different, you know, day of marking, pride festival, uh, celebration, even the uh, Tantra energy healing retreats are uh, been, you know, put into the calendar, rainbow calendar. Um, so we are circulating it and uh, in coming months, we will be working with the Nepal Tourism Board, but also with the uh, hotel associations, trading association and so many other uh, umbrella bodies that are working on hospitality and tourism sector um, to let them know and also partner with some of the events that um, sure. that we have listed. For example, um, we want to do every year um, the, uh, you know, Mr. Gay Nepal uh, beauty pageant. Um, uh, we want to do this uh, 
matriarchal hiking, tantra hiking. Okay. We want to do this Tantra Heritage Tour for Kathmandu, Bhaktapur, Patan every year. We also organ want to organize a Rainbow Sport Festival, for example, inviting uh, South Asia. Perhaps if we have a good team, we can invite whole Asia kind of thing. Uh, we also want to organize, because Nepal is a champion in, a in Asia for LGBT rights, we want to organize a big international conference yeah. promoting LGBTI rights. But also um, the tourism conference will take over uh, every year, uh, will uh, be much bigger next year, mm -hmm. next time. So uh, these are the things we are, uh, we will be working and expecting cooperation, uh, participation from our, um, you know, um, private sectors, uh, the magazines the uh, magazine. like yourself, uh, the hotels, uh, Nepal Tourism Board, uh, but also uh, community. LGBT community, very excited. As an ambassador, what are you doing or how do you see your role? Are you actually dealing not just with the organizations, but also with embassies and others? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the the uh, last month uh, International Tourism Conference, uh, you know, World Bank came on board. They sponsored Big Chunk. Uh, we have uh, USAID, EU, for example, and Nepal Tourism were supported. But we also have, uh, you know, Tan, Nata, Pata, all those all uh, came. We also partner with the International Gay Lesbian Travel Association, which is umbrella organizations of uh, LGBT travel agencies from different mm -hmm. countries. Um, they also joined last month. So we are working with uh, international partners, the diplomats, the embassies here, and uh, the media sections. Um, from uh, next year on, um, we will have, uh, you know, uh, from from now on, we will ask uh, the travel companies, hospitality sector, uh, not just tokenly support, but also truly uh, prepare themselves. So a lot of uh, <coughs> challenge we see, uh, not challenge, but a gap we see is uh, a lot of hotels, for example, do not have uh, LGBT friendly policy or inclusive policy. They have not trained their staff and management how to cater LGBTI travelers. Um, the government do not do no. not have a, a concrete plan. So we want to help the Nepal Tourism Board uh, to invest more, and then also with the you know coming up with the strategic ideas and plans to promote uh, these uh, rainbow tourism, but also uh, solo women travelers to come to Nepal. Um, so uh, I am, um, as an ambassador, very happy to produce a training of trainers okay. then who can go and, and train, train the staff hotels. of the hotels, staff, the travel companies, the tour operators, trekking guides, tour guides, all those things, you know. That's a big gap that we need to do in a massive scale for the next couple of years. Usually it's easier to work with the private sector. With the government, what are some of the challenges some of the, the issues that probably you still need to get over in terms of rainbow tourism? Yeah, uh, now the tourism board is uh, because the uh, the offices are very, uh, you know, friendly and sensitized already because of the exposure for so many years. Yes. Uh, it's not, it has not been that difficult to work to convince the Nepal tourism board, whereas tourism ministry is still hesitant. Um, they first they don't understand it and then second uh, somehow they do not see the potential um, and uh, so it's a lack of uh, understanding of this uh, market um, tourism board uh, has a lot of good people but uh, it lacks the overall you know strategy uh, and independence it's, it's, yeah independence. they're basically under the ministry also, yeah uh, so they, they cannot work that much independently and not just in rainbow tourism, but overall oh. the functioning is, uh, it's like uh, very bureaucratic, very slow. Um, so, uh, hopefully they will change it. Uh, the best thing, you know, in addition to those cultural, tantric, you know, uh, Ajima and all the six genders kind of thing, um, uh, Nepal should have, um, um, that's what I'm proposing as well to the government is promoting uh, Nepal as a 
wedding and honeymoon destinations for rainbow sure. couples. What happens is when if we allow them uh, a foreign couple to come and register their marriage here uh, in wedding, you know, both couples will bring their friends families. and families as exactly. well, and in the 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 they, they spend a lot of money on celebrations. Uh, that will generate a lot of jobs for the community, True. you know, the hair uh, stylish, right. the makeup artists, the dress designers, uh, the wine organizers, for example, exactly. the food and beverage, everybody, the True. hotels get, uh, so it will generate a lot of job, a lot of income. And for that, the government do not have to invest anything. They just need to organize a little bit, have a little bit of kiosk uh, next to the tourism board or next to the district court somewhere. Just for foreign couples to come and marry, and just to marry. facilitate, just to basically. facilitate the marriage, they can even take a, a good hefty fee to issue the marriage license. You know, a so, couple of hundred US dollar, for example, to register. Then that will uh, bring a lot of uh, couples from exactly. throughout the world. It can become another Las Vegas, for example. Uh, so Las Vegas is known for casinos, but also it was because they the allow foreign couples to come and marry. Marriages. Yeah. So that would be a, a, another thing. And then, you know, once they marry, they will also have honeymoon here. You know, there's a lot of interesting packages you can offer um, honeymoon into Everest Base Camp, for example, or Mustang, all, you know, exotic uh, thing. And they're quite uh, nice, uh, you know, high-end luxury resorts are already there. So they will get benefit a lot. So that's something, uh, a bold step uh, Nepal can take. And uh, if you look at uh, the geographic, uh, you know, benefit, Nepal is an ideal place. You know, politically, you can say it is a maze. You know, in a uh, yam between the two two boulders or something. You know, Krishna and Sarse. But it's like you know, both China and India, um, fast growing, but both are lacking lagging behind on the LGBT on these areas. Yes. So the couples or the LGBT from China, India, if they find Nepal uh, welcoming, why not? You know, they would rather come here, you know, rather than going to Europe or America. So it's a huge potential. Um, so government need to be a little bit of, uh, you know, smart. Otherwise, no investment needed. It's a potential then, market. Yeah, potential market. This is a policy and make a little bit of arrangement for, uh, uh, for uh, you know, same-sex waiting. Uh, then, uh, you know, promote it to, into the international venues as loudly as possible. We welcome LGBT and we're tourists. Yeah. You know, we don't need to do much. Uh, and with this uh, grandmother goddesses, tantric traditions, etc., Nepal can bring its own, uh, build its own brand and image uh, because nobody in the world offers tantric tourism. Exactly. Uh, feminist, for example, or matriarchal tourism. Nobody others have learned it. In Nepal, I'm promoting it. The private sector started learning. They have started sending their tour guides to me how we uh, use this product that I have developed. Um, you know, it's uh, the heritage tour I usually do every Saturday. You should join sometime as well. Uh, Saturday morning takes about three hours. It takes you back into an ancient time, 3,000 years back where Ajimas, the grandmother goddesses, were perhaps governing the uh, societies. And uh, you would get a window of opportunity to, um, you know, listen and understand the social uh, system, the value system that times, how women were valued differently, their liberty, their freedom, uh, their sexual expressions and all those things. The roots of our society, basically. basically. It's just the patriarchal invaders came and it's still we have this mix. It's not completely eradicated, but we still have that. You know, no, no other country does. For example, if you look at, uh, you know, if you mention about yoga, people usually think about yeah. India, Ayurveda, still they think yeah. about it. And we have over uh, sold the Everest and Buddha's birthplace. Uh, there's nothing new after that. So it's a tantric yeah. thing. You know, yeah, I think Nepal needs, yeah. new needs new products to products. offer the market yeah, because yeah. tourism is always ever evolving. evolving. And I think this would be wonderful. Yeah, and then this really, uh, you know, upcoming uh, in a big way market is solo women travel. LGBT, yes, but also solo women travel. Or Nepal would be perfect for them as well. So that's what I'm promoting. Are you actually helping tour companies uh, to make these packages? Because you have the... Uh, 
the insight into what they would like, what what are the criteria, and helping yeah. companies to actually make packages. Yeah, I'm helping companies to make a packages. There are a couple of uh, you know gay travel companies been registered recently, mm -hmm. like Kuermandu in Kathmandu, and then Dakini Hospitality. Their hotels are coming up, uh, dedicated to LGBT travelers. Uh, also, they're run and operated by uh, by LGBT community members. So I'm helping them, but also uh, I've offered my support to uh, developing aid, development uh, aid partners here on also Nepal Tourism Board. I've developed this uh, Tantra Heritage Tour, city tour in Kathmandu. So I can do the same with Bhaktapur, Patan, yes. Kirtipur. But also I can help to develop a bit more longer kind of hiking routes, for example. Not many people know, a lot of people know about Manakamana, yeah. Goddess Manakamana. And this is the Manakamana is the uh, the whole hill, Manakamana hill. The top the is Manakamana. also goddess. And then she has other two sisters, which is less known, the Chibkeshwari and Alkamai. These are all three sisters and they are mother goddesses. Uh, we can organize a tantric experience, hiking, go, oh, spend a couple of days, meditate, look at uh, the uh, local, um, you know, folk traditions, dances, but also uh, uh, quite a good healers they are, shamans, Shaman. you know. And shamans are always, you know, middle gender people. If you look at their outfit, they wear long dresses, long yeah. hair, yeah, uh, no facial hair, a lot of jewelries, and their movement is very feminized. Well, of course, it was, uh, you know, for uh, uh, middle gender or people of third nature, used to do those jobs before mm. the healers, the teachers, the advisors, and all those things taken over by men and uh, the female born uh, are completely out, but we can revive it as well. But the glimpses are there. And then, uh, so they can go up, spend a couple of days and then take another, you know, trekking, hiking and another yeah. hill, do the same. It will be a tantric, spiritual, but also quite a liberating, you know, travel for uh, for those who are interested. It will be a so different, experience a different experience for them to altogether. see this. So these are the packages I'm, I'm helping and also there are other like, you know, Patibara in the east okay. and also we can go Jualamai up to almost border to India, uh, develop this very feminist or matriarchal, uh, you know, uh, travel products that would attract uh, any solo travelers or couples, those who are looking for completely different and new, unique experiences. A little while back, you mentioned about uh, LGBTQs actually starting hotels and uh, mm -hmm. staffing it themselves. On the other side, I would like to ask you, because tourism is quite a big industry for Nepal with widespread employment need. We need a lot of human resource. Right now, people are leaving the country. How open is the industry? Let's say normal, uh, your five-star hotels, your four-star hotels, tour companies. How open are they to actually employing Nepalese LGBTQ uh, community if they have the training? if they have the skills? Uh, some of them are quite friendly and uh, we have, you know, even we were discussing about where we should host the uh, first international conference. Quite a lot of number of, you know, five-star hotels uh, pitched for themselves. They wanted to build a brand. So, you know, associating with uh, LGBT travel, they see as a sign of pride. And of course, they are international chains, so they already know the market. Uh, that's why they are, uh, you know, luring and trying to get benefit of it. But even smaller hotels, uh, uh, quite a few, uh, you know, small guest house and hotels offered a free rooms for the participant this time for the okay. conferences, you know, uh, the local and the international ones. Um, so it's, uh, you know, better they do understand. Otherwise, they will miss this market. It's coming big in Nepal. Uh, in a couple of years' time, it will change the whole dynamics of Nepal tourism. So, uh, sooner the better for those uh, hospitality sector travel companies, you know, accept it, adopt it, or and fully you know, integrate into their programs and business. And on the other side of it, I mean, our LGBTQ community, which is often marginalized sometimes, you know, are they now more focused perhaps that there is an opportunity tourism will open for us and they are going into those kind of trainings that kind of exposure yes. big hope uh, among the lgbt community but also you know we probably have this community have less choice than the other heterosexual ones a lot of young people uh, lack of job they can go to middle east and other countries but you know uh, the uh, lgbt cannot go because it's illegal in qatar dubai saudi arabia all this 
major, you know, uh, the labor class workers going. You know. So we have to do something here. Uh, so LGBT community is very excited. So we were talking about uh, the employed LGBTQ in, in the service sector in Nepal. Yeah. Anything else you would like to add on that? This is, I think, um, one of the first, uh, you know, area where LGBTI uh, start getting mainstreamed and integrated to the back into the society. Um, and tourism sectors, quite a lot of, uh, you know, avenues there and very suitable for many LGBTIs. Um, you know, LGBTI are quite talented in hospitality, yes. on, you know, uh, public relations, for example. Uh, they're also very good at hygiene, cooking, very talented exactly. and all these interior decorations uh, and stuff, gardening, etc. Um, uh, but also uh, every traveler is, uh, you know, when they travel, first they're very open-minded and more they travel, they become more, more open-minded. Open uh, so the travelers are very happy to have... Uh, you know, use those businesses where Which it's are. more inclusive, uh, yeah. where there are LGBT and so many other, you know, uh, diverse, uh, you know, manpowers are, are, are helping the businesses. So uh, they would prefer um, if, a, if a hospitality sector travel companies are also employing yeah. LGBTI yeah. as their staff. Um, and they also will check into their website or some other way, reviews and stuff that whether the staffs and management have gone through uh, uh, at least basic trainings, um, how to deal with the LGBTI travelers. So one of the thing, you know, um, it's not just about, uh, you know, technically knowing what to do, but also how to cater this, you know, community, the, the travelers, uh, clients uh, is a bit nuanced approach. Uh, for example, I have, you know, experience here, uh, many uh, friends who come, they are a couple, uh, man, man or woman, woman. And then usually when they check into the hotel, yeah, yeah. the hotel put them into a separate bed. And once they go into the room, they already find themselves a separate bed. They're actually, you know, already married and, and registered their marriage. Exactly. So it's difficult for them to ask back. Uh, if they say, oh, we are a couple, whether the hotel would treat them uh, well or not. Whether so they actually understand, thing, actually. You know, yeah. uh, little thing, the reception should know, you know, and ask whether, you know, what kind of bed do you like, exactly. king-size, separate bed or queen-size bed or something like that. It's a very simple thing. Right. I also, you know, trained uh, there are 25 uh, women uh, trekking and tour guides uh, three months ago. So one of the uh, trekking guides said, she had a solo trekkers a woman coming from the Europe and they spent seven days quite well. But as a Nepali, you know, she kept asking whether you're married, uh, oh. whether you have children or not. And she said, I'm not married uh, with men. I'm a lesbian. I used to have partner. I'm single now mm -hmm. and I don't have children. So the, the guy did not know then how to respond. Uh, she was a bit afraid, kind of uh, not even shocked. She says, maybe I would make a uh, wrong uh, remarks or something. So she got very hesitant. She didn't know how to break the ice afterwards. So through the trainings, you know, you can just, oh, that's how nice. To. I accept it. Exactly. I've gone through this training. Nepal has yeah. made this progress. You know, you, you will True. be equally welcome. Anything you could say. But the whole rest of the three days are gone awkward. They, you know, they couldn't know. talk each other. The, 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 the silence. And she still regret that she didn't know this. How to react. So this kind of training is very important. Um, and uh, a lot of, I think it's a, also time for a community to uh, not just looking for job, but also become entrepreneur now. Uh, those who can afford, but also there is now uh, the government uh, should come and offer an interest-free loan, uh, or, you know, uh, those who do not have anything, uh, you know, collateral uh, thing to support, to support uh, help them to uh, invest in something. So work with the bank, easy loans, something like yeah. that for this community. And it's not, you know, sm starting small Airbnb kind of thing, even homestay home yeah. or a small bar, restaurant, salon. Uh, a gym, for example. So, so many, you know, uh, opportunities okay. are there for, for this community. Thank you, Sunil Babu, sir, for taking your time to speak with us. Unless there's anything else that you would like to add in terms of tourism, where, where Nepal can take this. 
no thank you very much for coming it's a new start for nepal new dawn um and uh, uh private sector will take over it uh, sooner the better the government need to just sort out their uh, little policies and uh, really seriously consider uh to uh you know arrange uh, so the same sex couple foreign couple can register marriage and they can charge for the license that would you know, that would make a big go, difference, big difference for the destination the destinations too. yeah thank you so much sir for taking time and sharing your views and your ideas things that are happening in the tourism industry for us thank you so much thank you thank you so much